Hello. In this video, we're going to look at creating and testing simple Azure managed application in a developer's Azure subscription. And in subsequent videos, we'll get into more complicated things. But just wanted to get this one out of the way first. So uh, we'll not go into the details of what a, a managed application is. The assumption is that you already know. But if you take a look at the documentation, just as a reminder, there is going to be a managed resource group to which uh, as a publisher and an ISV, we will have full access and the customer, the consumer uh, whose uh, subscription this resource group is located in will have some limited access that we can provide to them. Great. So how do we begin? Inside of the documentation, there is a lot of examples and samples that are available. So for example, there is a repo with managed application samples. There is also description of how to create UI, how to test the UI, and what are different components. What I like to do is I like to use Visual Studio Code for building uh, ARM templates and for, for all kinds of things, but in writing code, but specifically for managed applications, it's also super convenient. And what I also recommend uh, highly is installing a, a, an extension called Azure Resource Manager. It's this extension right here, and you can find it online. Um, installing that so that we can uh, build the templates in the in easier way. So if you look online, Azure Resource Manager tools, it's super convenient. Okay, so let's take a look. So I, I pre-created a few little components, the minimum set of things we will need in the application. And let's go over what's inside of this simple, super simple application. So main one is the template itself. This is what will deploy the resources inside of that managed resource group. So we're going to take a couple parameters, a location for the resources as required, and the name. We'll use the name to construct a storage account name by appending some uniqueness to it and a VNet name. Uh, then we'll give some address spaces for VNet. We'll create the VNet. And just to show you how convenient the uh, plugin is, you can see it gives me IntelliSense and it gives me versions for known um, for known resource types uh, based on the schema here. And you can see it's running a language service there. It knows that it's an ARM template. So very, very convenient for that. And a storage account um, with the name. No outputs from this template. Great. So this is going to be the template. If we just deploy this template using regular Azure portal and CLI, we will get the, this created in the regular resource group. But we want to try to do it, pretend this is a managed application that does something. Okay, great. How do we get those parameters fed into the template though, right? So we need to define what's called the create UI definition. And it's basically something that is a JSON again, like the template itself, where we have different screens, basic steps and outputs. We'll not go into the details of each step here. I'll show you in the docs where to see it. We'll have a text box with a name name. Uh, uh, you're restricting the parameters to a certain type and the output will be called name output and we'll take this name from the basics blade and pass it through. That's a second file we need for our managed application, minimum. And the third file is the view definition. This will control what we see on the right side of the screen when a managed application is deployed. So let's take a quick look at those, those concepts. View definition, you can see more about it here in the docs, uh, how to create portal interface. You can learn much more about it here and it gets pretty complex uh, in terms of what you can do. It's very easy to do it though. And to test the portal UI, there is a great tool inside of it called Create UI uh, Definition Sandbox. So if we open up this UI, let's just copy this link and open it up inside of my subscription. Once it opens up, let's clean up whatever is here and put our own code there, right? So the create UI definition code and just get an idea of how that UI definition looks like in the portal. Okay, and let's do a preview. And you can see it will ask for a region and a name. And uh, this is that name parameter that we had. We can put some values here and we can put an example resource group here, okay? And we can say create, uh, and then we can say create, and this is basically the way to test how your UI looks. So this is a great test bed for testing the UI, testing the template itself, you just deploy it, okay? So that, that is as simple as 
uh, deploying it. Great. Let's go on into the next step. So we got our minimum template defined. Great. We need to do one more thing. Very important when we're going to be publishing templates in for Azure Marketplace, there will be some checking that happens uh, on the Azure Marketplace side. And one of the checks that it will run is this type of a tool called ARM Testing Toolkit. So you should go download this tool, um, install it into a, a directory and your machine. And then we should run this tool against our own templates before we submit it so that later we don't get a decline from the marketplace saying, hey, your template does not comply with the best practices. There are many best practices to follow. So again, we need to test the application using that tool. I already downloaded it, uh, uh, basically cloned the repo and put it right here. And we can run this command. So I'm on Windows, but it, there are commands for Linux and Windows. I'm inside of where my code is, and I'm going to run the test uh, against my code. Okay, so let's see what it's going to do. It's a, it's a PowerShell-based testing tool that's testing my files against best practices. So green things are great, red things are not good. So it says location should be in the outputs. Okay, so why, why does it say that is well because location is always needed to be provided and should be part of outputs. So let's take a look at that. An output must be present in the template parameter. So we have a name output called name output does not exist in the template and the template that we called name does not exist in the output. So where is it going to come from? So let's go quickly fix these issues. So first, we're going to fix this name to be name so it matches the name of the parameter and it will fix the two errors out of the three let's see and we got one error will be location missing right and we'll add that just wanted to show you uh, that this is the best practice always do these tests uh, before you try the template location should be in the outputs great so what does that mean well let's just go and using this special syntax our parameter is called location and this is called location as a function in the UI definitions. This is documented way to pass the location. Awesome. So now we're going to have all green uh, on our template. So it's pretty good to submit. So what's next? Next is we will want to, because we're going to be testing in, in our own subscription, we will need a couple of things. So what we will need is we will need to zip up our code, create your definition, main template and view definition and create a zip file. So I just have this command for my Windows box to run Windows 10. It created my zip file, including create your definition main template view definition. Then I have an AZ copy tool installed. This is just a command line tool to copy stuff to storage. And I'm going to copy this zip file into a storage account using a shared access signature, for example. So, uh, well, where do I get this URL? Uh, because that's a convenient way for testing. I, I usually use the Microsoft Storage Explorer. This is my folder. Let's create an access signature here with right permissions. Write and read. So read, uh, create, write. Let's give it a very long lived access signature and create it. This is going to be our URL into which we're going to upload this file. So I'm just going to post paste it here. But this URL is just a folder we need to put here that we are uploading a zip file. And let's take a look if this works. Great, so it seems like it uploads, so it's very convenient to iterate. I don't need to use this tool to drag and drop. I just zip and upload. Great. What do we do next? Next, we need to define a resource group where we're going to store the definition um, of this managed app. So in my subscription, I'm already logged in. I'm just going to create a resource group in East region called AVMA, just for that definition. Okay, so let's run this command. This does nothing but create a resource group. Awesome. And the resource group is created right here in the subscription. It will appear here in a second. Okay. And then let's create ourselves and upload this managed app definition. And what managed app definition will do is we'll give it the name, we'll give it the location, we'll put it in the resource group we created, we'll give it the name, 
we'll give it authorization. So we'll here we'll need to put principal ID of the Azure Active Directory group or user. And this is corresponding to an owner permission. You can Google this and see. And this will be the URL of our uploaded file. So let's do that. So we'll take this URL of where the zip file is. It will use the zip file to create. And we just need to fill this thing with a name of the group. So I'm just going to go, I have a little group defined uh, or a user. Let's just pick a user. It doesn't matter. For our purposes, we'll just make it uh, myself. So let's grab the object ID. And let's see if this command works for us. Okay, let's see. So the command finished running. Okay, it seems it created successfully. Let's go and take a look. We go to resource groups. That's the resource group where we put the definition. And we see our definition is here. It's called the service catalog managed application because it's in the same subscription, the developer subscription, where we're at. And we can see it's right here and we can deploy from definition. Let's give it the test. And this is basically, uh, it should show us our UI. Let, let's go through these couple steps. Great, it says which subscription you wanna put it, which resource group, well, let's just keep it in the same. Let's specify a different region for it for fun. Let's give this a name. Hello, world. Um, the application name will be Azure Manage Application. Hello, world. And without dashes. And then which managed resource group name should be used? We're just going to let it use the default. Or, you know, I often like to name it something Manage Resource Group that I can see and understand later. We'll see why it's convenient. And we'll create a deployment. So the deployment finished, it took a little bit. I had the video paused while it was going. It created um, the managed application. Notice Azure managed application. This is Hello World managed application for demo purposes. This is that view definition that we created, supports markdown. That's awesome. We can see our parameters. There's gonna be that name parameter that we gave it. Okay, we didn't specify any outputs because we kept it super simple. We did not assign a managed identity to this application, but we can later. We'll talk about that in different videos. So that's one thing. And let's take a look at the resource group just for a second. We have the AMA, and this is where our Hello World managed application lives. And if we see the managed resource group is called the AMA Hello World MRG, this is where we will find our VNet and our storage account. Because it is in my own subscription, I obviously have full access to this and I can show you why if I go here and say, give me access keys, I will be able to see even though this is a post request to list keys because it is in my own subscription. In the next video, we'll look into how to publish this into a marketplace, the exact same one, and then see it from a different subscription and different tenant where we will not be able to do some things from one side, but we can do from the other. And right here under deployments, you can see the actual deployment of our main template, right? These are the resources from my main template that we created, the storage account and resource group. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to take the MA zip file and we're gonna publish it into Marketplace and then try deploying it across tenants and see how that behaves. Thank you for watching.